Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our new varieties webinar from Harris Seeds. My name is Kendall Brittingham. I'm the marketing manager for Harris Seeds, and I'll be your moderator today. So I'll introduce our speakers. We have Michael Wells, our flower product manager, and Kristen Noble, our vegetable product manager. Their roles at Harris Seeds are to work with seed breeders around the um, country and around the world to look at new varieties, top varieties, um, what they want to have in our product line. They are sometimes trialing varieties for multiple years before they decide to take it into our product line. Um, they also work with our sales team and of course our growers to get feedback about the varieties to make sure that we are presenting the, be the best varieties possible for our customers. Um, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Kristen. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and um, taking some time to learn about our new products. We're really excited to share them with you. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before we jump in is that um, because we only have an hour today, we won't be covering all of the new varieties. Um, so I know on the vegetable side, we added over 60 new products to the vegetable product line this year. Uh, so to go through all of those would take um, a good few hours. So um, for today, I've just narrowed in on some um, that I'm really excited about and wanted to share with you today. And then um, if you have any questions or you would like information about any others that I didn't cover, you can feel free to reach out to us and we will um, help get you that information. So to start, um, I'll be going alphabetically through the products. So we'll start with cabbage. We added a few uh, new cabbages to the product line this year. One that I'm really excited about is called Extreme Vantage. It is a blue-green cabbage uh, and it's a larger head. So it's about a six pound head um, and it fits really nicely in our product line because at our mid-maturity range, we didn't really have a large um, head like this Extreme Vantage will give us. So that's a really nice addition for us. Um, it works really well for both fresh market and processing. And one of the things that I um, really was impressed with in trials is that it has a very dense head and really bright white color. So I think it'll be a really nice choice for those of you who do cabbages. Uh, then the next one that we'll talk about is Carrot Deep Purple. Um, so unfortunately, some of you may know that we've had some supply issues with Carrot Purple Haze the past couple years, um, this year included. And so we were really excited to be able to offer an additional carrot this year, um, which is a completely purple carrot. So purple haze, you know, um, has an orange core, whereas deep purple is purple all throughout. Um, it makes it really nice carrot for both fresh market and juicing. And so um, I would encourage if you have a market for um, mixed carrot bunches or something at your stand uh, that you consider deep purple. And compared to some other varieties that are on the market of purple carrots, this is a hybrid variety. Uh, so it does have a stronger disease resistance package and really nice uniformity. Uh, then we have Cauliflower Twister, which you can see from this picture has a really impressive wrap. Um, from what we saw, you don't have to um, worry about banding the heads at all. The leaves, the wrapper leaves really twist up in a really nice way, hence the name Twister. Um, so it'll keep heads looking really nice and um, bright white. And the plants were all very uniform and uniform maturing so that you'll get a really um, consistently sized head uh, that will work really well for both boxing and fresh market. Um, then we've got a new basil. There's a lot of basils on the market right now, but this one we're really excited about. It's called Everleaf Emerald Towers. And it has a really exceptional um, columnar kind of compact habit, so it can get two to three feet tall. Um, it's really beautiful in a container as well as in field plantings. Um, the plants you can kind of see from the picture there, they're very upright, very sturdy plants. They have short inner nodes, and so you get a lot of leaf mass off of these plants. Um, the habit is really nice uh, as well for pot sales, so if you have a greenhouse and you're selling plants direct to um, customers, it's a really nice choice for that as well. Um, one thing to mention is that the Everleaf brand of basils, we have um, this new one, Everleaf Emerald Towers, as well as Everleaf Nevis. Um, that Everleaf brand means that it's a late flowering variety. So this one in particular will flower up to 12 weeks later than some of the basils on the market, um, like your standard Genovese types. So we've been super impressed with it in our trials, as well as um, a lot of the Harris Seeds employees have been growing this in their home gardens. And 
we'll be able to get um, delicious, amazing basil off of these plants until late into the fall, um, until after frost sometimes. So it's really an outstanding variety. I also wanted to mention a few new herbs that we added to the lineup. Um, we're really excited about these because they are all available as organic seed. So if you are an organic grower, um, you know that there's not a whole lot of herb varieties available to you as organic seed. So we're excited to offer these three this year. Lemon Balm Alice, Sage Fanny, and Thyme Islet are all organic seed. Um, and they were all really impressive in our trials with very strong seedling um, vigor, very good germination rates, and excellent uniformity. Uh, so we hope you'll give those a shot and um, feel free to give us any feedback that you have about these new herbs as well. Uh, next that I'll go through is pepper tarpon. Uh, this is a new variety that we're excited about because it's got a very strong disease resistance package. It's one of the strongest on the market right now. Um, you can see here from um, the bullet points, it has resistance, intermediate resistance to Phytophthora, um, BLS 0 through 10, as well as um, tomato mosaic virus. So the big thing there is that it's, it covers all races of bacterial leaf spot, as well as Phytophthora. So if those are um, challenges that you have on your farm, this would definitely be one to try. Um, if you're familiar with Turnpike, it has um, very similar qualities to turnpike, but it has a little bit more of a refined shape. You can get some variability with turnpike, but tarpon, and you can see in the image here, uh, is nice and blocky. Um, the plant is pretty compact and it has a nice concentrated set. So uh, if that's what you're looking for for your production system, tarpon is a really nice choice. Um, the next pepper that we will look at is um, doesn't have as catchy of a name, SVPB8415. Um, this is a really beautiful uh, yellow bell that we've trialed for a couple years now, and we've been really impressed with it each season. It has really high yields of very large blocky fruit. Um, the color is a nice deep golden yellow color, whereas some others are kind of a brighter yellow. Um, this has a really strong disease package as well for a colored bell pepper. So it has um, bacterial leaf spot up to race 10. Um, as well as TMV. So that was another um, thing we were really excited about because we don't have a lot of really strong disease resistance packages in our colored bells. So this is a, a nice improvement there. Um, again, a concentrated set, a nice compact plant, uh, and really exceptionally sweet thick walled fruit um, that have a nice blocky shape. So we hope you'll give that a try. Um, we have lost a couple of our yellow bells from the product line in the past couple seasons, and so we are excited to be able to replace those with uh, this variety. I also wanted to mention briefly a few hot peppers that we decided to pick up this year. They are not all necessarily new to industry, but they're new to us, and so we're excited to be able to offer them to you. Um, a couple that you see um, there in the um, upper left and the lower right are Carolina Reaper and Trinidad Scorpion. So you may have heard of those before because they're a couple of the hottest peppers uh, that are being produced in the world right now. So if you're feeling brave and you wanna try those, um, we welcome you to uh, test out Carolina Reaper and Trinidad Scorpion. Uh, in addition to that, there in the upper right, we added a new Serrano pepper called Trepio. Um, it's got a really nice large fruit and good disease package. So if you are a um, Serrano pepper grower, it might be a nice one to, um, to try this year as well. And then there on the lower um, left-hand corner is Aji Rico. And that's one that has been available on the market for a little while, but it is now this year um, available as organic seeds. So uh, again, if you're an organic grower, we have this available um, if you're interested in trying a specialty hot pepper like Aji Rico. Um, now onto pumpkins. We have some really interesting specialty pumpkins that we picked up this season that we're very excited about. Um, this one is called Hot Chocolate. It is a really nice companion for pumpkin grizzly bear that we introduced last year uh, and that we had a, really, a lot of really excellent feedback from all of you um, for pumpkin grizzly bear. So this is the same size as grizzly bear very similar uh, caramel chocolatey color, um, but it is a smooth pumpkin um, and it'll come in at about five to eight pounds. Um, 
we have received some questions this year if this works nicely as a pie pumpkin. It does have a high quality flesh for um, consumption. And the plants do have powdery mildew, which is a really nice perk for some of these specialty types. So um, we hope you'll give hot chocolate a try. And um, it's a good way if you aren't sure if your customers at your roadside stand or um, in your existing markets, if they're interested in tanned pumpkins, um, this is one that is a really nice small size that could be a way you could gauge that market. Um, another specialty variety that we picked up this year is called Jade Night. It is a beautiful gray green kind of color. Um, you may be familiar with pumpkin jardale. It's similar to jardale um, in size, but it does have an earlier maturity. So jardale can be um, a little bit late maturing. Jade Night comes in at 90 days, which is nice. Uh, it does also have a little bit of a darker um, more olivey green color where Jardale is kind of a more um, true blue gray. So if you wanted to have a little bit of a mixture there in your blue green pumpkins that you offer, um, Jade Knight is a nice choice. It also has really excellent eating quality. Um, so if you market your squash um, to be both ornamental and edible, Jade Knight is a really nice option for that as well. And um, it does have powdery mildew and zucchini yellows protection. So um, that'll be a perk as well. We also are really excited to pick up a couple of new large gourds this year. Um, one of those that was one of my favorites from trials is called Gourd King. Um, the other you probably saw in our catalog is called Gourdzilla. Um, the one that I wanted to talk about today is Gourd King here on the screen. Uh, it is a large um, hybrid mix. And so you get a wide variety of different uh, shapes and colors and sizes. Uh, they all are hard shelled, so they store really nicely. Uh, another thing that's unique about these gourds is that they have powdery mildew protection, which a lot of the gourds on the market don't have at this time. Um, and it does come in at 100 days maturity, which is pretty um, relatively early for a large fruited gourd. Uh, so you can see there in the picture, there's a large diversity of colors. You have some darker fruits, some lighter ones, um, some that have tinges of white and bright green. So I think it's a mix that um, you'll really like once you, you've got it in your lineup. Then a new winter squash that we're also really excited about is Autumn Frost. We're offering this in treated and organic seed. Uh, it is a novelty winter squash that has a flesh quality that's very similar to a butternut. Um, but it has it has that similar fine texture, but it has a much sweeter and somewhat nutty flavor. Um, it's definitely become a favorite for me at home um, in our cooking, so uh, I encourage you to try it. It has this really unique um, frosted overlay look to it, um, so hence the name Autumn Frost is, is pretty suitable. Um, it stores quite well for up to four months and does have powdery mildew protection. So if you're looking for a new novelty winter squash that um, works as both an ornamental and an edible, Autumn Frost is a great one to consider for that. Next, we're on to everybody's favorite, sweet corn. Um, we picked up new variety this year called Crave. It is a later season, 78 day by color, super sweet. Uh, if you are familiar with the white variety Glacial, it is a sister line to Glacial. So um, you'll know that Glacial has really exceptional eating quality um, and really nice flavor and sweetness um, and a really good um, tenderness, and but still with some crunch. So um, if you know Glacial, I think you'll really like Crave um, and I'd encourage you to try it out this year. It does have a larger ear that comes in at eight inches or longer. Um, but it is more refined with 16 to 18 rows. The husk package is really nice. In every trial that we saw it in uh, the past couple seasons, it had ample coverage um, and really nice dark green color and good flag leaves. Another new introduction for us is progression. Another late season at 78 days, but this is a synergistic buy color. So if that's the class that you like to use on your farm, um, progression was really impressive to us in the trials. It has a large ear that comes in um, most often at eight and a half inches and 18 to 20 rows. So it is a little bit of a girthier ear, but it is um, still nice and refined. Um, really high eating quality, good tenderness and um, excellent holding both in the field and post-harvest. 
And um, the Husk package again with this one was really nice with good coverage, even in this past season that we had high temperatures and we saw a lot of um, ears pushing through the husks, the progression uh, still stayed well covered, even though it's a larger year. Then on to tomatoes. Uh, tomato Buffalo Sun is a new uh, indeterminate variety that we picked up this year. It's one of my personal favorites from the trial. It has um, really beautiful heirloom style fruit, but it is a hybrid variety. So you get that benefit of the large heirloom um, appearance but you have then the perk of it being a hybrid with disease resistance. This package on um, Buffalo Sun includes late blight and um, the fruit are extra large, 18 to 24 ounces. And the, we tend to see less um, fruit cracking and better holding ability both on the plant um, and after harvest for these um, hybrid heirloom types. So, um, if this is a class that you have success with at your market, that heirloom appearance of fruit, we would definitely encourage you to try Buffalo Sun um, and benefit from some of the perks of that heirloom style, but also the hybrid plant. Um, we also uh, have trialed this as an All America Selections entry and Buffalo Sun was a winner this past season. So we know that it performs well all across the country, both for professional growers and home gardeners. So Buffalo Sun is definitely, um, in my opinion, a must try for this coming season. Uh, another variety that we added that kind of falls into that hybrid heirloom class, it's an indeterminate, uh, is Medusa. It is again, a hybrid variety that has an heirloom appearance. Um, really exceptional flavor. You can see it's kind of a cherky purple type. It's got that purple tinge to it. Um, similar to Buffalo Sun, we see less cracking, more uniform fruit and improved holding ability on Medusa. And um, Medusa, again, similar to Buffalo Sun, does have late blight. And we've seen it perform well in both open field and protected culture settings. So um, again, to fit that class um, of the hybrid heirloom variety, and we offer Medusa as organic seed. So um, we hope that you'll give that one a try as well. Another variety that we're really excited about is this beautiful tomato roadster. Uh, it falls into that first early planting slot. So kind of uh, a similar uh, time frame to like your Primo Red. It has a large eight to 12 ounce fruit is concentrated set, a nice disease resistance package, and we've seen it perform um, both for mature green and vine ripe um, applications. So um, especially if you are a roadside grower and you're doing tomatoes, we encourage you to try Roadster out for one of your first early um, standard slicing varieties. I think you'll be really impressed. We've looked at it for the past um, two, maybe three years and each season we've been increasingly uh, pleased with the performance on Roadster. Um, to complement Roadster, we also have a new variety Red Snapper, which falls into that second early planting slot, so kind of comparable to Red Deuce. Um, again, a determinant variety, large 8 to 12 ounce fruit. This one we see continuous set, whereas Roadster was a little bit more concentrated, which um, suits that first early slot well. But we um, then will have Red Snapper come in with, with more of a continuous fruit set. Again, a really strong disease resistance package uh, includes um, TSWV. So if that's a pressure that you are struggling with, this is definitely a good choice for that. And we see that it is really well adapted. Uh, it has been trialed um, in the South all the way up to uh, New England. And so we know that it performs really well and it does have um, good heat set ability uh, also. So, um, Red Snapper is another one that we encourage you to try um, for your uh, fresh market sales, especially for roadside stands. Okay, next we've got Tomato Sparky. This is another one of my personal favorites from Trials. We've looked at this for the past couple of seasons. Uh, it is also an All America Selections winner. So we have, um, it has been trialed by independent growers all across the country and performed really well. You can see that it has a really beautiful fruit. It has a novel gold stripe to the fruit, um, hence the name Sparky. And it also has um, 
the XSL trait, which is extended shelf life. Um, so we know that these hold really well on the plant. They also hold really well post-harvest. So some cherry tomatoes don't have a very long shelf life and we've been really impressed with Sparky um, for that reason. So even if you're a home gardener, you can harvest fruit, they won't go bad before you get a chance to eat them. And similarly, if you're a professional grower and you wanna be able to ship product um, short or long distances, Sparky is a really good choice uh, for that reason. And um, it's also part of this of a new series that we're introducing called the Cream of the Crop series um, from one of our suppliers, AP Whaley. Uh, so these are varieties that have um, a really novel appearance, but they also have exceptional eating quality, flavor, and sweetness. Uh, so in this case, Tomato Sparky has a Bricks of 8.5, and um, we've been really impressed with it across all seasons, even though each year is, has had variable conditions, Sparky has performed really well. Another variety that's a part of that cream of the crop series that I mentioned is called Tropical Sunset. Um, we're really excited about this one because it has a really beautiful um, golden pink blush um, color to it and the flavor is just exceptional. It's a favorite um, from our trials. A lot of our sales team really enjoyed uh, taste testing this one and um, we are offering it in organic seed. It is um, a cherry sized fruit that comes in at about one and a half inches uh, on indeterminate plants and we do um, have good evidence that it performs well in both open field and greenhouse settings. So um, we hope you'll consider, especially if you do mixed quartz or anything like that, um, Tropical Sunset will add a really unique color to that mixed, um, mixed offering. And the last variety that I will go through is Watermelon Excursion. And so we added quite a few watermelons this year to the product line. Uh, I'm really excited that we are carrying Excursion because it falls into that mid-early slot at 81 days and it's a large fruit size. So um, it'll come in at 18 to 22 pounds and you'll typically get greater than 50% of your harvest at a 36 bin count size. Um, so for that earlier slot, it's a really nice uh, large fruit with your standard uh, crimson sweet style patterning. Um, on the rind. Um, as you can see in this picture, the flesh quality is exceptional. It has very small and very few number of pips and um, it offers both fusarium and anthracnose resistance. So um, we hope that you'll give Excursion a try if you're looking for uh, that larger 36 count size uh, seedless melon. And those are the vegetable varieties that I'll go through. And like I mentioned before, please feel free to let us know what questions you have or if there's any that I didn't cover that you'd like more information on, then we will certainly get that for you. Thanks again. And I will pass it over to Michael now to go over some of our cut flower additions. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us. And thanks, Kristen and Kendall. Um, so today I'm going to go through our, some of our 2021 cut flower additions. Keep in mind, we also have lots of bedding plant additions that we're not speaking about today, um, and some additional cut flower items available through plugs and liners, um, some vegetative items and bulbs as well. Um, so again, check out our website or ask us some more questions later um, on any other product, and we'll get moving. Uh, so Carthamus. Um, this is common name is safflower. Um, this is a variety I've loved. Um, I've trialed it a few different seasons. Um, when I farmed, I had this. Uh, it's a cool textural addition to bouquets. Um, it kind of has that look of artichokes or cardoons, but really a much smaller size. Um, these are great fresh or dried. Um, out of the different varieties on the marketplace, these are the ones that are the least spineless. Um, so. Uh, a lot more, a uh, lot less painful to harvest. So uh, definitely a great variety to check out. Um, 60 to 80 days to harvest on these. Um, uh, go ahead, Kendall. Uh, this is a really exciting one. A lot of the team at Harris, the ornamental people, were very excited for this. Um, these colors of echinacea, this is the artisan collection. Um, we've got the red ombra, which is a larger photo. And then the soft orange, um, the red ombra uh, opens red and softens to um, 
a lighter pinky red uh, as it matures. Um, and the orange also it starts off deep orange and then uh, fades as it matures to a more softer um, color. So it's a great, both of them have great combos. Um, the big thing with these is keep in mind, these colors have never been available individually from seed. Um, so generally these are looked at as a vegetative product. Um, some people have grown the Cheyenne Spirit. Um, this is similar to those. Um, it does have some improvements. Um, easier to grow, um, more consistent height between the different colors. Um, you're gonna look at on these seven to 10 day vase life. Um, the other cool thing about echinaceas I love is that the cone itself after the petals drop can be a great addition for more texture into bouquets or boutonnieres as well. This next one, the ornamental kale cut flower collection. So these varieties themselves, the crane, pink, red, and white um, are not new to us, um, but we're now offering it as a collection. Uh, we find our growers like to test new varieties and in some cases need smaller quantities of them. Um, so the collection will save you about 10% um, versus buying the three varieties separate, but you'll get a pack of 50 seeds for each. Um, Ornamental Kale is a really cool product uh, for the fall production. Um, they do not change color until temperatures, night temperatures get around 50, 55 degrees uh, consistently. Um, but we have people using these for holiday arrangements uh, up through Christmas um, and beyond. Um, so really cool product. Um, things to keep in mind with these. Um, spacing wise, uh, they are kale cabbage family, so they can get quite large. Uh, so space them at six inches um, as they're growing up, just with other, as with other cut flower kales. Um, pull the bottom leaves off and that'll help them get more of a rosette at the top. Uh, Panicum frosted explosion. This is, uh, we used to carry this. Um, there was some seed production issues from the vendor and now they have it back, uh, really high quality seed. Um, and uh, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, it's a grass, but it adds this nice fluff to arrangements. Um, you can harvest it at the small stage where you can use it in boot, uh, boutonnieres, corsages, um, or your customers can. And it also has the nice green stage that you can see pictured and then it, fades to like a brown rusty color, um, which is great and can be used as a dried uh, arrangement as well. This is an ASCFG cut flower of the year. Um, if you're not familiar with ASCFG, the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers, uh, definitely check them out. Um, if you're doing cut flowers, they're the go-to resource for uh, the industry on uh, just production and marketing. Uh, Rudbeckia sputnik. This is a fun one. Uh, Rudbeckia is one of the species genera um, that I'm in love with as a cut flower. Um, it, I feel like it's underused, uh, definitely. Um, my two favorites are the Indian Summer and Prairie Sun, and the sputnik is a nice uh, color that kind of blends in with those, or kind of plays well with those two. So it's not a solid color. You get nice, uh, unique colors on it. Um, four inch bloom, uh, golden yellow. Um, but that mahogany is just looks delicious. Um, on these, you're looking at a seven to 14 day vase life. Um, the trick with any Rudbeckias is to remember is to do the neck test. So when you go to harvest, kind of point them back and forth, shake the head a little bit back and forth. And if it's stiff, it's ready to harvest. Otherwise you will find the blooms dropping. Uh, Pro Cut Gold Sunflower. Um, the Pro Cut series is one of our top series of uh, sunflowers. Um, they are single stem, um, pollen free, which is common for cut flowers, especially going to a wholesale florist um, or to florist directly. Um, this particular one replaces Pro Cut Gold. So it's a little lighter, a more intense color, which I find very, very gorgeous. When we saw this in trials, um, it really stood out even compared to the gold. Um, this does have downy mildew resistance. Um, for people in more cooler, moist areas, uh, definitely something you wanna check out on some of your other sunflowers as well, um, if you're noticing any issues. Seven to four, uh, sorry. Uh, 10 to 14 day vase life is expected with these guys. And 50 to 60 harvest days, depending on the time of season you're planting. Queenie series. So zinnias, uh, as if you've grown zinnias, Benares giants are the most popular. 
This is kind of in between those and the Oklahoma size. So you're looking at two to four inch double blooms. Um, you will get some uh, singling blooms in these, uh, probably around 70, 75% of doubles on them. Um, we've, uh, we've picked up the full series now. You see the mix in the back, um, but the two uh, that I really want to spotlight today is the lime um, on the right. So that lime, um, it's a great improvement. It's not part of the Benari series, but it's really an improvement on that, that green, that lime chartreuse you're looking for in Azinia. Um, and these really put out doubles um, compared to some of the other varieties on the market. Um, as far as the orange, um, this is new to the series. Uh, the Queenie series is known for having that antique look. Um, the orange is, one, is their first introduction that's more of a pure color. Um, so again, it, this would not be in the mix, um, but it's a great one to grow alongside uh, the others if you're looking for that nice double bloom. Please disregard, disregard the downy mildew resistance noted here. My apologies, I copied that from the sunflower previously, um, but that does bring up uh, powdery mildew can be an issue with zinnias, um, good airspace, uh, airflow, uh, nice spacing. Um, nine to 12 inches on these guys. Uh, these are right in line with Benari's Giant on being able to push off uh, powdery mildew, uh, but all just about all zinnias later in the season will get it. So, um, but these are good high quality uh, compared to some others on the market. And the last is an interesting one to showcase in a cut flower spotlight. Um, I tend to get a little crazy when it comes to cut flowers. I will try just about anything. Um, and see what holds. Um, but in the last five, six years, succulents have been quite common for people to use in bouquets, boutonnieres, corsages, corsages, sorry, uh, and different arrangements. Um, so we've now picked up four different varieties um, that can be used in, in those different ways. Uh, the, a couple of these you can see are annuals, a um, couple are perennials, depending on your location. Um, the things I want to spotlight on these are like the Echeveria, the Peacock, and the Hippie Chicks. Those are two that, to utilize those, what growers would, or florists would do, designers would do, is take a small stick, a florist stick, they would refer to them, or like cooks would call them kebab sticks, um, poke that in the back and you have a nice stem on your uh, succulent, so they can be used in bouquets and arrangements. Um, the lizard and the oracle sedums, those are more your delicate, um, those would be used in like corsages, boutonnieres, um, smaller, so not your large. Um, succulents from seed are not quick, um, so you're looking at this, the quickest one is going to be the lizard at nine week, nine to ten weeks. Um, but the, also the piece with these is you're not looking for flowers from them, you're just looking to use the foliage. So you can use them at different sizes, different maturities. Um, depending on what's going to fit your marketplace. And that's all I have today for new introductions. Uh, feel free to reach out to us with questions. And thanks for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Michael and Kristen. Um, Michael, I'll start with you. We've got a couple of questions for cut flowers. Um, the first, does the Sputnik Rudbeckia drop a lot of pollen? I... It, I would say it's right in line with the Indian summer. Um, not a lot, um, but it will have some. And how was our supply on sunflower seeds this year? Other companies have had some problems with supply this season. Overall, pretty great. Uh, there had been a couple varieties um, that the vendors just had crop failures on, but for the most part, we have great supply. We have... Uh, where it, everything's looking good. The big thing to remember with a lot of people getting orders in early this season is sunflowers, generally we don't get new seed because new production is not ready for us to get from our vendors till December. So a lot of people may think that seed is not available, um, but us brokers, seed companies are just getting the seed. So big thing to keep in mind with sunflowers and lots of other crops. Great, thanks, Michael. Um, I'll jump back if we have any more flower questions and we'll move on to Kristen for a bit. Um, first, we're gonna start with cauliflower twister. Is twister a spring or summer, or spring slash summer planting or a fall planting cauliflower? 
Thank you, Kendall. And thanks everybody for submitting your questions. Um, from what we've seen so far of Twister, it is very flexible for different seasons. Um, we're still gathering some more information. We've just um, done some preliminary trials in the past season in the Northeast and we were really pleased with it. Um, but it is used in all planting seasons um, down in uh, the Southwest. And so it is very flexible with um, hotter temperatures as well. Um, how does pepper tarpon compare to ace? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with ACE, but from what I recall of it, um, pepper tarpon will have a stronger disease resistance package than what ACE offers, I believe. And um, I think it is a blockier uh, fruit shape than, than ACE, but um, thank you for bringing up that question. And I'll look into ACE a little bit further and, um, and see if there's anything additional. Great, thank you. Um, looks like the next question is about some of the sweet corns we talked about. Do you have the ear heights available? Yes, we have ear height data available in our catalog in the quick reference chart. Um, I don't have, I, I haven't memorized the ear heights for the couple that we talked about, um, but I do recall that they were both um, quite, quite well placed. There weren't any that we were um, having to really bend down to pick this season. I recall um, ignition being one that was quite uh, highly placed on the plant. I know we didn't talk about that this uh, in this uh, PowerPoint, but it is a new variety that um, had really nice height ear placement. But if you refer to our catalog, there's a quick reference chart in there that compares all the varieties and um, we'll have more specifics there. Fantastic. Um, moving on to Everleaf basil, how does it compare to other varieties in regards to disease resistance, in particular downy mildew? It appears to be a dense and vigorous plant. Yes, it's definitely a dense and vigorous plant. Um, right now, I don't believe there's any disease resistance to downy mildew claimed for um, emerald towers, but from our experience, we haven't seen that it's infected very quickly in the field. Um, it also has a really nice, like the downward cup uh, shaped leaf, which helps a little bit with discouraging uh, downy mildew infection and, and helping the water run off the plants. Um, but in the future, we'll have a little more information about how it compares to others. But uh, at this time, we don't claim any downy mildew. Um, how large are the pepper tarpons on average? Um, what I saw in our trials this season, it was a, probably about a four inch blocky. Um, some of it will depend on your growing conditions, but um, I would say that's where it typically would fall. Um, it looks like we've got a couple of questions about tomatoes too. Uh, how is the cracking resistance in tropical sunset? Tropical Sunset looked really great when it came to cracking. Um, we had it side by side with a couple of other specialty varieties that we were looking at. And um, I was really pleased that there were very few cracked fruit and um, very nice uh, fruit holding on the plants. There wasn't a lot of fruit drop, uh, which you see in some other cherry tomatoes. Um, one thing to note is that in our conditions, we did have a very dry summer. so. Um, we may have seen some more cracking had we had different conditions, but uh, in the past two years that I've looked at it, I've been pleased with uh, low levels of cracking on tropical sunset. Um, what is the flavor for Roadster and Red Snapper? Would you say they are as good as Red Scarlet? Um, I haven't had them side by side with Red Scarlet, but I've been pretty pleased with them. Um, definitely, I mean, we, we see that we have a lot more complex flavors in some of the specialty uh, tomatoes and um, Roadster and Red Snapper maybe don't have quite that uh, complexity to their flavor, but they really are a nice um, slicing tomato and kind of the flavor that you expect from uh, those sorts of fresh market tomatoes. So. Great. And then it looks like we've got one more question on the availability of vegetable seeds. What does vegetable seed availab availability look like with COVID right now? Yep, 
Um, thankfully, we're in really good shape and, and we're um, really impressed with all of our suppliers this year being able to provide us seed because we all are, we are all going through the same stresses of um, COVID and pressures on our production systems. Um, but as it stands right now, we have really good supply of a lot of products. Uh, and like Michael mentioned, in a lot of cases, the items that we have on back order are um, because we're waiting for the new seed crops to come in. So that's one thing that um, this past spring, we had a really um, large uptick in the volume of sales than we normally would. And so in some cases where we would have some carryover seed into this season to help get us started, um, we sold out of all of the seed and um, so did our suppliers. So in a lot of cases, we're waiting for new seed productions to be uh, completed and cleaned and, and treated and whatnot and shipped to us. So um, if you see that there's a lot of backordered items, it's not because there's a seed shortage or anything like that. It's really because we are uh, waiting for the new seed to become available. So um, we have every confidence that we'll be able to uh, fill as many orders as possible this spring. That's great. Um, and then I've got one more question for you, Kristen. Mm -hmm. What are you most excited about out of all the new varieties? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think I'm most excited about some of the varieties that we've been watching for several years to finally be able to introduce them to you all. Um, there's a few of the tomatoes like the Tropical Sunset and um, squash autumn frost that we've been looking at for uh, two or three years. And so um, they're ones that when I saw them, I thought, okay, we have to have these, um, but they weren't quite ready for us to list and um, share with you yet. So I'm really excited to be able to bring some of those sorts of products to everyone. Awesome. Um, thanks, Kristen. And then Michael, I just have a couple more questions for you and then I think we'll wrap it up. Um, do you recommend removing the leaves of the flowering kale as it grows or once it is harvested? Um, either way can work. Um, definitely doing it as it grows, um, you'll get more of a rosette at the top. Um, so if you wait to the end, it'll be more open of a head. And then similar question for you, Michael, what are you most excited about with the new additions this year? Oh, those... It feels like that shouldn't be the toughest question, but it is. Um, I would probably say the Echinacea, the Artisan Red Ombre. Um, I'm just excited to see more stuff available from seed that um, generally speaking is only available vegetatively, um, which makes it more difficult for people to access. Um, so kind of excited about that. Um, and then for future years, are we looking at anything truly new and exciting? Always, always trying to find new and exciting items. Um, I will say one thing that I try to do if we're just focusing on cut flowers um, is I'm constantly looking for what bedding plants are being introdu introduced to the marketplace that could have some crossover into cuts. Um, honestly, there's a new celosia, foliage celosia that we've picked up um, that I'm going to be doing some trialing on to see if that's usable as a cut. So uh, we're always looking for new, interesting things. So yes, what that thing is, we don't really know, <laughs> but we'll keep looking. Awesome. Um, and we'll have this as our final question. Kristen, are there any new varieties that would work for pie pumpkins? Uh, yes, yeah, so of the new varieties, like I mentioned, um, pumpkin hot chocolate will work as a pie pumpkin. Uh, it is definitely that novelty type though, and so um, folks that are looking for pumpkins for specifically for pie um, and canning and baking and things, uh, there are some more traditional orange varieties that are available as well, and those are ones that we've offered for a few seasons, so you'll find them in our catalog, and um, we've got several different sizes. Uh, for those small uh, pie pumpkins available that have, some of them as well have really high sugars, which is um, a perk when it comes to um, using them for pies as opposed to uh, just ornamentals. So um, I'd encourage you to look through our full offering of small pumpkins to pick out what works best for you. 
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, everybody who's joined us. Um, we hope this was helpful. We have a really quick survey at the end, if you can stay for just another minute, just asking um, for any feedback you have. Um, and yeah, thank you again. We appreciate your attendance.